Given how important your brain is, we haven't been studying it for all that long, and we still don't know as much about it as we should. That said, scientists are still working to unlock the mystery of how that meaty organ in your head controls every aspect of your being, and we're learning more remarkable things about it and about us as a species all the time. As it happens, some of what's being discovered about the mind is pretty remarkable and, well, pretty mind-blowing. Number 10. A doctor studying the brains of psychopaths discovered that he was a psychopath. Everyone has a brain, but not everyone has the same kind of brain. There are a number of neurological conditions and disorders that can alter your mind to a greater or lesser degree. And for years, one of the most fascinating parts of neuroscience and the study of the mind has been related to the minds of criminals, especially people like serial killers and psychopaths. Now, not every psychopath is a serial killer, of course, and even that difference is part of the study. Why do some psychopaths become killers while others just become CEOs? James Fallon from the University of California was studying the minds of psychopaths as part of his work in the Department of Psychiatry. Where he works, the lab had actually done scans of the minds of serial killers over the years as part of their criminal defenses. And Fallon, in his capacity as a psychiatrist, studied these scans and began to notice certain patterns. He used this as a jumping off point and became somewhat of an authority on the mind of the psychopath. And that's when things got weird. Delving into his own family history, Fallon discovered a number of shady relatives, including famed killer Lizzie Borden. Later, he and his family participated in some Alzheimer's research, which required some brains to be scanned as a control. Fallon saw his own scan later and recognized it immediately. It was the brain of a psychopath. Fallon has never killed anyone, of course, and thought it was silly until pretty much everyone in his life agreed that, yeah, he was a bit of a psycho, manipulative, reckless, emotionally distant, but able to feign empathy. It made sense. How did Fallon respond? He tried to practice being nice and recognizes that he has dark tendencies, but not necessarily dangerous ones. Number nine, scientists have suggested dolphins qualify as non-human persons. One of the fun things about studying brains is that you don't have to just study humans. Researchers studying dolphins, arguably the smartest creatures in the world next to ourselves, have made some impressive discoveries over the years about just how smart these animals are. And perhaps the most stunning conclusion any researcher has come to is that a dolphin deserves to be considered a non-human person. Person. What is a non-human person? It's pretty much what it sounds like. Psychologists from the City University of New York and zoologists from Emory University scan the brains of dolphins and observe their behavior to determine that the animals have distinct personalities, self-awareness, the ability to consider the future, and the ability to not just learn, but to teach others. They are people, they're just not human. Efforts have been made to have dolphins and whales recognized with personhood and therefore individual rights since the study was released. In 2013, India declared that dolphins could no longer be used in circuses and SeaWorld type shows, though they stopped short of giving them human rights. Number 8. LSD activates unusual parts of your brain for visual processing. If you've ever used LSD, maybe you don't need to know what science says it does to your brain, but there is some fascinating stuff going on up there when you start tripping out. And when you think you're seeing things, your brain is agreeing with you. Brain scans conducted on people who took LSD specifically for the purpose of seeing how it affects brain activity had some illuminating results. Parts of your cortex, which are normally buffered and protected from information overload, get overwhelmed with signals. Your temporal cortex gets Gets less info than normal while your posterior cingulate cortex gets too much. Normally your thalamus filters information through to other parts of the brain, but LSD disrupts the ability to do that, giving rise to unusual feelings and sensations. There's a lot going on that your thalamus normally protects you from because you don't need to experience it. While taking the drug, you can process new visual signals in parts of the brain not normally associated with visual processing, which is what's happening when you start hallucinating. The exact method of how it all works is still unknown. Number seven, love and cocaine affect your brain in very similar ways. If you've ever heard the expression love drunk or observed yourself or others acting weird when they're in love, that's not just a joke. Your brain really does go a little wonky when you're in love, and studies have shown that love and cocaine actually have a very similar effect. The loving question isn't the sort of long-term feeling of affection, but that early euphoric feeling that people sometimes get in a new and intense relationship. That explains why some people seem to go overboard and do weirdly impulsive things like getting married the day after they meet. Both love and drugs like cocaine affect the same pleasure centers in the brain that give you a rewarding feeling. In fact, the way your brain processes love and pain relief are very similar. Both give you that dopamine rush that makes everything feel great. Number six, many wear ties get less blood to their brains. 
A necktie is one of those clothing articles that doesn't serve any real purpose, but people keep wearing them more out of a tradition than anything else. They're considered formal and businesslike, but there's some evidence it's not doing your brain any favors thanks to their tendency to restrict blood flow. Obviously, you're not meant to choke yourself to death with a tie, but the fact remains that it's essentially a noose that you choose to loosely choke yourself with. The results of this is that less blood flows to your head and your brain as a result. Researchers scanned the brains of 15 men before and after wearing a tie. Blood levels to the brain were reduced reduced by about 7.5% after tightening the tie. A small amount, to be sure, but just how much blood do you want to deprive your brain of anyway? The research concluded that the blood flow reduction may not be life-threatening, but it could have more serious repercussions for smokers and people with high blood pressure. Early research suggested ties could ruin your eyes as well. Number five, murderers tend to have reduced gray matter compared to other criminals. We touched on the brain matters of psychopaths earlier, but what else is happening in the brains of murderers? Not every psychopath is a murderer, and not every murderer is a psychopath, but a study of 800 convicts showed some interesting results. The brains of murderers specifically were different from other brains. Specifically, those who had committed murder or attempted to commit murder had reduced gray matter when compared to those incarcerated for other offenses. In what isn't much of a surprise, these reductions were noticeable in areas of the brain related to behavioral control and emotional processing. Less gray matter means they're less able to process information related to those things. The study excluded those who may have suffered from things like psychosis or schizophrenia, as well as any that may have had brain injuries, eliminating those as potential causes for what was observed. Number four, nearly every single NFL player studied has degenerative brain disease. It's no secret that professional football is a physical game, and the risk of injury can be very high. But no players signed up in the past fully aware of the risks that are far less obvious than simple bumps and bruises. Brain scans from numerous former NFL players have shown a widespread prevalence of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CDE. At least 320 players have been diagnosed with a degenerative brain disease, and at least two dozen have died as a result, most of them in their 20s and 30s. In 2017, a study of 111 NFL players discovered the condition in 110 of them. The condition, historically associated with boxers, leads to a lot more damage than it seems on the surface. The men suffering from these conditions don't just have an illness that kills them, it's a condition that alters their personality. Some of the victims committed suicide, while others, like Jovan Belcher, Philip Adams, and Aaron Hernandez, murdered others before taking their own lives. Number three, pot smokers' brains show abnormalities. Marijuana has become very popular in the last few years as more and more places have legalized its use. A number of states and countries are on board with smoking pot or otherwise enjoying cannabis, and many proponents have for years argued that weed is far safer and better for you than things like alcohol or tobacco. But it should come as no surprise that the increased use has led to increased study, and there is some research that suggests that it's not as good as everyone hopes. The American Heart Association took a fairly neutral stance in 2022, suggesting more more research needs to be done on the effects of marijuana in the brain. Rodent studies show that marijuana use can disrupt memory, learning, and brain development. Human studies, however, have results that are all over the map, with more or less favorable results depending on the test, which is not really helpful for anyone. A Harvard study in 2014 showed that pot smokers, even casual ones, had significant abnormalities in the parts of the brain controlling emotion and motivation. So, is anyone shocked to hear that pot smokers are not motivated? Well, probably not, but it could become more of a problem as pot use becomes more widespread. Number two, space travel changes the shape and other aspects of your brain. Space is not a natural environment for humans, and our bodies have some curious reactions when we're left in zero gravity. One of the most curious side effects, which has been learned by the Russian space program, is that prolonged spaceflight can alter the shape and performance of your brain. Researchers studying the brains of cosmonauts noted that the brain was essentially rewired. They scanned the brains of 12 astronauts before and after their time in space, which averages 172 days per astronaut. Brain fluid, white matter, and gray matter were all altered after spaceflight. Portions of the brain will actually change shape to adapt to the environment of weightlessness, but they don't readily change back when astronauts return to Earth. In fact, later, the changes are still present, and it's not fully known what kind of effect that can have going forward. Number one, scientists studied monkey brains and managed to extract faces from their thoughts. Uh, we studied dolphin brains to determine they are non-human persons, so what could we learn by studying monkey brains? Well, some full-on science fiction stuff. Researchers at Caltech were studying the brains of monkeys and how they processed things like faces that they were seeing. The result was that they were able to determine how the neurons in the brain organized information when a monkey saw a face and then extracted information. That is to say, they could reconstruct a face that the monkeys had seen based solely on information in their brain. 
brains. When the reconstructed faces were compared to the actual photos of people, the results were nearly identical. The scientists weren't specifically trying to read monkey brains. It actually came about as research into algorithms for facial recognition technology. And it turned out that the algorithm worked almost exactly the same way that the monkey's brains did. While the potential for perfecting facial recognition technology is present in these results, there's also some more esoteric possibilities, like maybe using the brain of a murder victim to see the face of their killer.